Welcome back to Lantern Insights. Today we're going to be showcasing a game again with the switcheroo version where we have the sideboard uh, Urza's, Urza Thopter Sword combo in the side. However, this game uh, we're, just, we're not going to be siding into it. I don't think this is a matchup where you should. Uh, but I kind of want to talk more about the main deck. And I think this is actually a pretty solid shell if uh, these colors interest you. I think kind of when when you're playing Lantern, your kind of three parts are your your discard, your removal, and then your card advantage. So the, something like the Abzan version using pending in white for removal, hand disruption, black, and then green using stirrings as card advantage. So when we move to Profane Tutor over stirrings, that dropped the green. I think in this version, we're using blue for word of invention instead of uh, that card advantage. So keeping the white removal, black hand disruption, and blue for uh, blue for our card advantage. Anyway, this hand here is basically like uh, one of like our, our best hands. This is basically like one of the best openers uh, we could hope for, which is quite fortunate. Uh, they do reveal Giganta uh, before before the game, uh, and when we look at their hand here, obviously they're on Shadow uh, with the Shadow in their hand. However, they are playing Terra Sunder main deck. And so I think we have to take the, the Terra Sunder here. Yes, they're going to be able to Thoughtseize. Um, they're probably taking a bridge anyway. And if they take anything else, I think we're still in pretty good shape. Uh, as I anticipate that something like Terra Sunder is going to be a much lower. Kind of, They're not going to have many answers for bridge main deck. Uh, but they are going to have lots of uh, hand disruption. Uh, another reason here to take Terra Sunder is that they likely play counter spells. And so if we force them to use the Thoughtseize now, we don't have to worry about them holding up like Terra Sunder plus Counterspell for later in the game. Uh, but they are going to get their, their Thoughtseize here and take uh, take the Ensnaring Bridge. And realistically, this isn't a huge deal as we will be able to use uh, Prismatic Ending on uh, the Death Shadow that we know about. And with them just drawing lands here, I mean, obviously we're in... Pretty, pretty solid shape. They do get to preordain. Um, we see what their their second card is drowned in the lock. So it kind of adds another layer of something that we have to find where we have to now find hand disruption plus uh, plus bridge. And you will see I use Pixis fairly aggressively there. Yes, Ledger Shredder wasn't a huge threat, but it's mainly also to use my own library where I want to be as aggressive as possible, especially game one. Where they don't have too too much that we're worried about but being very aggressive in kind of finding um, the pieces that I, i'm missing and we do see they drew a second death shadow sorry that went kind of quick there um so their hand is like two two death shadow which does mean uh you know prism we are going to have to find a bridge um but it it should be doable at at any rate um, and they are, they're also playing Tarmogoy, so that's kind of what they're in the Sultai, Sultai colors for. And you know, they're going to use their fetches, you know, be able to play out two pretty good sized uh, Death Shadow. Uh, obviously a fairly fast clock, um, but we are just going to dig as aggressively as possible for an ensnaring bridge. Another Codex Shredder will help us uh, hopefully get there. And as we can see, like they're playing Fatal Push, Bitter Triumph. They have a lot of removal in their deck. Obviously, that's what Shadow does. And just being able to blank all of it is very strong. And then just keep digging here. And you know, we find a Lantern. Uh, it is going to be one uh, almost like a redraw, kind of not, not quite a mill rock, but not totally useless is Lantern here. Uh, importantly, the Ledger Shredder does speed up their turn by a clock, but we were using our Mill Rocks to kind of mill us, so we, we kind of had to let them get it through. Uh, but they don't have a second spell to follow it up. We do Sack a Lantern here. It doesn't, at this point, it doesn't really matter if you do it on their turn in your upkeep, you do it before or after you mill. Um, yeah, you can kind of do it whenever. Uh, we do find a Prismatic Ending, which we elect to draw because. Prismatic Ending, Exiling right there. Uh, they do have... I can't remember if they have Bowmasters in hand or if that was uh, the next game. I don't think so. But it, it buys us an extra like five turns where this Ledger Shredder is going to take six turns to kill us. 
and so we're in in pretty good shape here. Like from here, I would say we're we're definitely favored to win. Obviously not guaranteed, but we do draw the Whir of Invention. On uh, one thing, when you are digging with mill rocks, uh, Whir of Invention becomes less of an out the more mill rocks you tap to play it. So sometimes you get into situations where, like on your upkeep, you tap, you're digging for bridge, digging for bridge, and then you find a Whir of Invention and you are unable to cast it just because you tap too many mill rocks. Uh, but here we have we'll have no problem casting it i'll go through the actual locking them out of the game like finishing the game a, a bit quicker here uh, but it, importantly to note uh, often sh uh, shadow you know in the, the grixis colors has access to counterspell however just revealing gigantha meaning we don't have to play around counterspell kind of any of those double pip hate cards for the rest of the game is definitely pretty good for us and yeah, from here, I mean, we just mill them out. I won't go over it too, 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 too much, but you know, like it's it's very standard. Keep them off anything. Importantly, in this scenario, uh, we do want to keep ourselves off counter spell too, which is is very important, obviously, as as we would die. But that's more than more than easy to do with uh, with Pixis here. So I'll I won't show the rest of the the game us just milling them out and. It, you do want to pay attention to Ledger Shredder here. Uh, I actually made a slight mistake at the time where I had F6 kind of forgetting about the Ledger Shredder trigger, but I was able to recover in time and we weren't too punished. They are playing some new cards, uh, Analyze the Pollen, just getting them a bit more, more digging power, but uh, we can worry about that. Uh, game one, interesting here, Prismatic Ending on the Mishra's Bubble. I just want to force them to use it. I don't want them to hold it up. It's not... Um, it's not really a big deal, uh, but for the rest of the game, like we we just mill them out. But I will be back for game two. So entering game two, it is important to note that they left Gigantha revealed, which means we don't have to worry about any like force of vigor or force of negation that they could have in the sideboard. And one thing, because so many of our sideboard slots are dedicated to the transformational sideboard plan. Uh, definitely hurts us a bit in matchups like this. Um, but I think like we just brought in the two ley lines to help fight some of their hand disruption, and call uh, went went from there. Uh, this hand is very interesting. I think it's very weak to Thoughtseize. Kind of doesn't do a ton early. It's going to be hard to keep Glimmer Void, and um, and so for that combination of, of reasons, I, I like to Mulligan. You know, we're on the draw. We're going to be able to see something, uh, and this hand is much nicer. Full lock hand disruption. I'm much happier with it. Uh, they shock a breeding pool and pass. Obviously, they're going to shock any land here they play because they're shadow. But I think it's somewhat likely that they have um, something like Stubborn Denial. So we're going to throw out the Pixis first, kind of hoping that they use it on that. Uh, I think you could go for Thoughtseize there, but I'd rather... I mean, they end up Thoughtseizing us back, but I still think it was correct just with them likely having... Uh, one in hand and we see bridge on top. So from here we're sitting in, in pretty good shape However, they do Untap uh, into engineered explosives on one. Obviously, that's what they were trying to protect uh, We milled their ledger shredder and then let it happen. Sorry. I clicked uh, a few too many times um, But we mill the ledger shredder don't want to give them an easy clock We do know we have bridge on top and they're tapped out so at least uh, we will be able to slam bridge here. And then we did see that it was a polluted delta that they were drawing. That was the card after we milled the ledger shredder. Um, so we are going to use bobble to get like a, a bit of information. And we do see stubborn denial on top, but they'll likely likely shuffle it away. Uh, we so we're just going to run out saga. It can get kind of whatever piece we need. And they do. Cast, uh, they cast Drown on the lock here, and obviously fetching away that Stubborn Denial is good for us, as at some point we are going to have to resolve either Lantern or Shredder, as Saga can only get one of them. Uh, Bobble is mainly, at, at this point, like without a mill rock, it's just kind of information on what your opponent's drawing, and we saw they were drawing another Polluted Delta, which is very good for us. Here, 
uh, you know, Shadow, one of the reasons it is such a good matchup is because once you get into this position, they don't really have many answers for Ensnaring Bridge. And just with that lack of answers, uh, I actually should, I should have made a construct here. Uh, I was kind of thinking about using War of Invention, uh, but decided that I want, wanted to Inquisition first. And yeah, uh, so they do play the Stubborn Denial. It was not the one that we saw. It's likely the one that they had in their hand from the start of the game. Uh, they just didn't have a good opportunity to play it. Uh, it's not a big deal that our Inquisition gets countered. Like, uh, I think we can play it next turn and as long as there's nothing on top, we're kind of not in a rush to get a uh, War of Invention for Codex Shredder out. Um, I think I made a slight mistake fetching there. You should probably leave, especially in a situation like this where I kind of don't have a, a super fast lock, where you know you might want to leave something like the Waterlogged Grove there, because it's very powerful, especially when I have a, a very frail lock. Uh, so Inquisition, and they do, uh, they do have a Counterspell. Uh, so their hand is currently Island Gigantha Death Shadow after I took the Drown in the Lock. And, and so from this point, like it'll be, uh, and just cast War of Invention next turn. Uh, importantly for that timing, I will do it in my upkeep so that I shuffle away this Lantern, which I don't want to draw. And we see one of their sideboard cards, Pick Your Poison, a new card from Karloff Manor, forcing an opponent to sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. However, they, they would get to choose which of those we sacrifice. And I mean, there is some, like, I don't think it's great against Lantern. Obviously, you know, if it's turn one or two, you can usually hit what you want. It's probably pretty decent against Saga. If you, like, go turn two Saga and then they pick the poison choosing enchantment, you can probably kill it. But for example, here, like, we just sacrifice the token when they cast it, and we're not really too worried about it at all. There's a many worse uh, worse removal spells they could be playing here for us so like honestly we're happy it's pick your poison over something like force of vigor where if people are playing pick your poison saying you know that's going to be my artifact and enchantment hate because it answers the ring and it answers murktide and that means less people are playing force of vigor then i am very happy about that uh, so from here we have a, a somewhat i'd say a pretty weak lock at this point where we are going to get into a few dicey situations. I know what their hand is, so I'm not really worried about uh, casting Inquisition here. But I will cast the Prismatic Ending on the Ledger Shredder. Uh, just with, if I had more mill rocks, I wouldn't care because it would mill them faster. But because we're at only one mill rock, I, I just don't want them having that extra draw. Uh, but here. You know, the good news is that so much of their deck at this point is bricks. Basically, the only thing I'm keep keeping them off of are a few Drown in the Locks and Stubborn Denials, Preordain, uh, and uh, Counter Spells. So we're, like, all their all of their creatures and that we, we don't care about. Uh, I do mill the Ley Line here, just because I don't have double white to cast it. Uh, yes, we did end up drawing it, but... Um, I think it's still correct to mill. And we do see they're playing Sauron's Ransom. That's a fairly good uh, piece of card advantage. And it, it's definitely interesting mind games when they cast it. Uh, but I think it's not great for us as it's very strong against us. As All they're basically looking for is one answer to bridge. So if we reveal four cards and one of them is an answer to bridge, you kind of have to put that one face down but then if they see the face up pile doesn't have any answers to bridge then they can just take the face down pile so it obviously there's a lot more play to it when it's like in other matchups but in in this matchup like Sauron's Ransom it's basically just like if in your top four is there an answer to bridge all right I get it if not then I don't get it so uh obviously quite quite strong against us uh, we, uh, we are putting needle on uh, engineered explosives which we see on top and that's what I mean it was a bit dicey when we just have one mill rock where you can get into some situations like this where like this preordain we don't want them to have either and that is one advantage 
Actually, I think we end up letting them have priority. No, we don't. Never mind. Um, one advantage of Pixis is where you can use it to control your own top at the same time as your opponent's, which can let you find come your, your missing pieces a bit faster. Or if we had Pixis there, all the times that we're milling them to reveal, remove something problematic, we're also milling us to remove something useless. And they concede here, and we have Pixis on top, the full lock, they have no chance in this game. Um, yeah, so we didn't get to see any fun sideboard plans, but obviously like the main game plan here is very strong against them. I think Prismatic Ending is so strong against any of like the aggressive decks, you know, Burn, Murktide, Hammer Time, Hardened Scales, Shadow, all of those decks, I think Prismatic Ending is like very strong against, and those matchups are highly favored when you're on a Prismatic Prismatic Ending list, which uh, if you've gotten to this point and you want to have some input on what I play next on Friday, I encourage you to head over to the community tab. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.